I'm so pumped of a CIC Drunatic in the house. Tenacious Freak, you're back. We missed you last week. Thank you so much, guys. Welcome to the weekly beer and video review show with me, Danny Soleil, a.k.a. Travel Man Dan, a.k.a. Reading Man Dan, a.k.a. Movie Man Dan. It's all going to be fun. we got six people already in the room. I'm really excited. The show is going to be amazing today. i got some delicious beers. i got some fun things to talk about. This week in history is going to be exciting. And uh, what I let you know when I'm reading, when I'm watching, is always a good time. So thank you so much, whether you're brand new to the show, Oh, Drew to tick. Yes. Sadly, I'm at work, but uh, <laughs> it's okay. You know that you snuck on during work. I really appreciate that. That is awesome. All right. Let me go. Let me wake up here a little bit. I got to be honest with you. I put it, tied it on a little bit last night. So I'm waking up. I'm feeling a little sluggish this morning, but we're rolling out with the show anyway. And here we go. If you're new to the show or if you're a longtime member, this is what we do on the show. We go ahead and we review two delicious beers, tasty IPAs, and amazing lagers. Hi, Baro. Welcome to the show. All kinds of fun stuff from all over the world, whether it's a fancy craft IPA or whether it's your common uh, lager. Hey, Uncle John, <laughs> you look good. <laughs> Thank you. Do you want to take this hat, I found this hat I wore it a long time ago. I used to wear it a lot. It's been through uh, some damage. It's got a, a cigarette burn right there. <laughs> yes, Aquanuts. Okay, it's definitely got some sun. I bought this about 20 years ago when I was in Italy. And um, yeah, I felt like wearing it. Obviously, you can see I'm a little... Um, I'm feeling it a little bit this morning. But yeah, that's what we do on the show. We review beers. In between the beers, we talk about the videos that came out on my channel last week. I preview the videos that are coming out this week. And we have fun segments like What Would You Rather? A little show and tell, which soon will be brought to you from people around the world. So if you're interested in hopping on the show and tell, go ahead and DM me and I'll send you the link for March, as we're going to be linking in people from all over the world um, to do show and tell. It's going to be a fun segment. I'm still looking for that history teacher. So, Uncle John, if you're reaching out to Brian, tell him, uh, you know, I could use him. I could definitely use him on the show, maybe two weeks. Uh, you know, we're going to bring back some fun people throughout the show. We got a new segment. Yeah, June to take. Um, we got a new segment coming up called uh, Eat It or Not. And uh, yeah, that's what we do on the show. Thanks for hopping on. Like I said, if it's uh, your first time here or if you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for your support. I'm creeping in. I'm creeping in. I'm about 90 some. Hi, Uncle John. I'm about 90 subscribers away from 5,000. Wow, the 5,000. And it's crazy because uh, you know how Facebook comes in and reminds you of uh, the things that you would post it. And this week, this past week, I think it was Monday or Tuesday, I got a little post reminding me that from two years ago uh, I was at a thousand subscribers so exponential growth organic growth the channel continues to get bigger um, you know I was brought up in that era before the phone so instant gratification wasn't always there you had to actually put in the work and the sacrifice and the day-to-day -day, uh, effort so uh, that's what this channel is really symbolic to me when I see things that pop up and they say two years ago you were at a thousand and uh, hopefully by my birthday at the end of April I'll hit that illustrious 5k and that's really important to me because it's not only one of the milestones that I thought I could get to here on the channel here is an organic growth but it's also the, the time when YouTube starts taking notice other people start taking notice and they really start cranking your suggested videos out so I'm really looking forward to that one all right so <clears throat> moving on with the show and we are pumped up and ready to go guys i got a really fun beer today uh this one is definitely i'm definitely hey what's up jens i'm definitely interested in trying this one i'm really um intrigued by it i'm looking forward to trying out and this one is from the duck foot brewing company guys i welcome to you the Duckzilla Double White IPA. Look at that thing. That is freaking awesome. If that isn't a Travel Man Dan label, I don't know what it is. It's so cool. Um, if you don't know me or if I've mentioned it here on the show, uh, you know the Marvel Universe is, hey, gents, is the Marvel Universe is awesome. Um, I love all the DC stuff. I love all um, the, the vampire and the zombie stuff. But uh, April 28th is my birthday, Barrel. Thank you. <laughs> But 
for me, my favorite thing is the monster movies. And I absolutely love Godzilla. Uh, definitely love King Kong. So really bitch and label. We're going to get into that later. It is a double white IPA. It is 8.6%. All right. So as I wake up hungover, a little bit hazy. All right. I'm hopping right back into it. Um, I'm hopping right into it with an 8.6 beer. So maybe I'm going to have some things snap back to me from last night, um, and I gotta tell you guys, I'm not, um, I'm not a big like everyday drinker. You know, this pretty much the only time I drink is two beers on a Sunday afternoon, and then if I'm out and about. But over the last year, I haven't really been out and about, and uh, yeah, so we're we're hanging in there with this uh, this uh, Duckzilla. This is a white IPA from West Coast IPA, uh, Duckfoot trying to think of anything else is interesting that you guys should see on this can you guys hey woo 28 now there it is Vishal my, you guys have seen Vishal on the show last week and the funny thing is is Vishal and I seem to share the same birthday so every year we always make sure that we give each other a, a big warm happy birthday Vishal good to have you here and uh yeah let's go ahead and try out this double white IPA now I don't know what a white IPA is and I know what a double is. It's it's definitely the stronger one. Oh yeah, this sucker is. Oh yeah, this sucker is blasting out some aroma. Okay, I, I can't. It smells more like a light hint of grapefruit, really a sweet smell, if you will, a citricky smell. Not bad. Let's go ahead and pour it and see what it looks like. Okay, yeah, baby. Okay, there we go. We're taking a pour. Right away, my initial look at this beer is that it's an IPA that is more looking like a lager. It's not one of those hazy IPAs that a lot of people like lately. All right, look at the carbonation. Look at the flow on that sucker, okay? It is churning and pumping bubbles down below. Now, the foam is not that high. And one thing I like about this is you can see a little bit of hazy, right? It's not, you can still see my face. Okay, it's not so cloudy that you can't see through it. It's got a great look to it with this amber kind of color to the the beer. <laughs> and um, one thing I really enjoy about this beer is that it's a little in between the dark and hazy. I mean, the light and hazy. So let's go ahead and the best way to determine what this beer is like is to taste it, to drink it. That's why we're all here. Let's not lie. We love beer. So cheers to everybody here. Here we go. Ooh. Wow. Okay. All right. Where do I go with this one? That was delicious. Okay. I don't know what it was in there. It's definitely got that taste of citric flavor going on. Uh, it's a cross between a lemon and a grapefruit. All right. Do you want a snack? How about cheese and quackers? <laughs> That's awesome. So Ariana is Vishal's daughter. She said, do you want a snack? How about cheese and quackers? Quack, quack. Ariana. Good one. That was, <laughs> I like that one. All right. Really delicious first sip. It's, uh, it's got a robust flavor. There's a lot, a lot of citric flavor and complexity going on in this beer. As you taste the, um, the grapefruit, you can taste the lemon, but then it also has a really hoppy flavor going on into it. And all with a smooth, refreshing taste. I mean, really, really impressed by the Duck Azilla. The first sip is a success. And now let's go ahead and pour the rest of the can in that, that thing. Yeah, that is, wow. I'm really beaming off that one. I think it's got me charged up and ready to go to the next level. And the next level is the video that came out last week. I don't know if you happen to check it out. It was on Friday. It was the Movie Man Dan segment. Okay, and if you don't know, <clears throat> Movie Man Dan is another character of mine where I go ahead and I draw in the life that I live as an actor here in Los Angeles or wherever I was in the world. Um, I'll be putting a lot of cool behind the scenes stuff. I put out some stuff that maybe is, I don't want to say advice or suggestion, because I'm nobody when it comes to it, uh, the acting and stuff like that. So, But I do want to make suggestions. I've been doing this a long time, and I've been had some success. I've had a lot of struggles. And sometimes 
I like to go ahead and bring that element to the Movie Man Dan channel or show. So this past week's video was the self-tape auditions that I did over the last two years. <clears throat> now, I've probably, excuse me, I've probably been on, since I started this journey, over 500 auditions. So I know what they're like, and I especially... <laughs> Before the, I counted the first time I was in LA from like 2001 to 2009, where self tapes weren't even vented yet, right? Everything it was a warm, it's a, you know, it's a, it is a good warm weather beer. It's it's a nice fall weather beer. Yeah, you gotta check it out though, V. If you get a chance to try it, it, it first sip. I'm gonna give the review on it, but if you haven't seen that video and if you're curious of what a self tape audition is. It's basically like your agent will call you up and they'll say, hey, Danny, hey, 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 Calvin. Well, that's a good time. A short time is a fine time. Thank you so much for hopping on. Well, your agent will call you up and say, hey, Danny, uh, as NCIS wants to see you for such and such. Send me a self-tape by Wednesday. So they send you the sides, which is the script, and then you go ahead and you tape it, and then you send it in. Now, if they like you, then they'll do a callback, and then you'll go in person. Before, in the old days, it was always in person. But now, especially during COVID, um, they're doing a lot more self-taping. So I thought this would be cool to go ahead and take 25 self-tapes that I did and I didn't get the job. So I went through all that preparation, all that hard work to prepare for the role. I went and filmed it. Um, some were shot in the morning, some were shot in the afternoon. You got to find a reader, all that kind of stuff. If you're interested in it and if you want to take a look and a glimpse into my life as an actor, check out the audition video I just put out. It's the Movie Man Dan Show on this channel. Um, it's a lot of fun for me, and it's um, it's not easy. It's not easy to, you know, I'm not, I don't go ahead and post my auditions ever, but I want to make a, a cool segment talking about an audition, talking about a self tape, what it's like, and then putting it together and saying, look, I feel it's validated for me to talk about it because I'm actually friggin' doing it, you know. Um, and if you take anything as an actor, any value, any situations, any advice that I might have thrown out there, good for you. I hope you use it and add it to your arsenal. I hope you book a thousand jobs, you know. This is um, it's a competitive business and any bit from wherever you get it from is always helpful. And if you don't, let it take you to relative to your lifestyle and understand that, you know what, it's through hard work through de determination, these things that we all want to see more movie, man. Thank you, Jens. It's coming, man. It's coming. It's definitely coming. I just, um, and we'll, I'll segment into that. I just booked another role on, uh, like, a web series. So I'm really excited about that. And I'll be able to bring you behind the scenes uh, for some cool movie man, Dan. Uh, I've always wanted to work with this uh, director. She's amazing. Her name is Sarah Newton. And I'll put down her contact below because she has a great, funny channel. Uh, thank you, Vishal. I appreciate it, brother. I really do. I appreciate that. And, um, you know, the, the channel is called Conservation Comedy. And it's kind of like these little sketches and, uh, and really fun, like, uh, spoofs on uh, on conservationist people, uh, you know, save the planet type thing. And the person that's doing it, the director, Sarah Newton, she's freaking awesome. I've had my eye on her for a while. I've always wanted to work with her. And she went ahead and she casted me as this great guy. This I'll wait, and, I'll wait till the show comes out to tell you more about it. But I'm really excited to be back on set. We should be starting to film next week. Um, it's basically like a, like a Survivor Series spoof where... You know how they have those game shows and they're like these competitions and things like that? It's like that, and it's a group of people that they put on a boat and they have to live without plastic, all right? <clears throat> kind of funny stuff. Um, there's some good stuff in there. Like I said, she's a writer. Uh, grats on the roll. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Notch in the house. Yes. Okay, we have Notch all the way from the Czech Republic. Guys, welcome, Mirzlov. Hello. Yeah, I'm pretty excited about it. Um, it's just keeping these little roles, you know, just staying staying active, continuing to work at the craft, and uh, really excited to be working with Sarah Newton. Guys, I'm telling you, in the next five years, you're going to hear about her. You're going to see her. The woman is phenomenal. Her direction was once on a game show. <laughs> that was I was once on a game show. If you guys have ever seen it, I don't know if you can find it on YouTube or not. I was on a game show, show called Going for the Green with Tom Green. What, <laughs> what's that noise? It's a rocket chimp. From, that's hilarious. 
But yeah, if you ever check out Going for the Green uh, with Tom Green, I was a contestant on that game show. It was an environmental friendly game show. It was really funny because I got there. It was right before I was about to leave for China. I was going to go back to New York and, um, and, and I actually won the game show. I, <laughs> I was the actual winner and I won a two week vacation to all the, um, the national parks in the Western Hemisphere of, Amer uh, of the United States. So it was like uh, Yellowstone, uh, Yosemite, uh, uh, Sequoia. They put you on a bus and they drive you to all these cool national parks. Now I've been to a lot of national parks myself, but uh, it was fun to be on this game show. I can't believe I won. The final round of it was really funny. I remember me and Vishal were watching it the one day and it was like, they give you these cardboard cutouts and they have like eight places on the front stage. Um, that's awesome. You got to tell me about that. Um, and it was like a rope, uh, glass, cardboard, and you had to put them in order of the decom uh, how fast they decomposed in, uh, thank you Vishal, decomposed in the ocean. And so I grab my stack, I go first, and I'm running out there, and I'm like, doo, 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 doo. and then you, once you have the first eight placed, then the buzzers come on, which ones are wrong. So I place them all down, I run back, only two just went and bust. I was like, oh shit. So I ran up, I, I switched them, I, I changed them over, ding, 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 ding. Okay, and that was my time, right? It was like Tom Green was blown away, he was like, Oh my gosh, that's uh, that's uh, the fastest time we've ever had, and like I broke all the records for the fastest time, and the number of 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 ones that I got right, I got all eight of them done like in a minute and something, and it's on tape, so I'm not bullshitting. Vishal's seen it, um, but it was crazy. But then the other contestant went, and he's he's dropping them, he's he's falling over, and so I ended up winning, and it was a lot of fun to be on that show. Danny won the show because the last contest was a drinking non-American. <laughs> that was too much for the Bud Light drinking. Ah, you know. I tell you what, uh, Notch, there's a lot of people that like uh, IPAs now in the United States, so be careful. We're coming for that Czech Republic. Anyway, that was my fun little game show story. Thanks, Vishal, for dropping me. I forgot about that, but yes, if you want to check it out, please do. Please check out uh, the Travel Man Dan, Movie Man Dan episode where I'm doing the auditions. This is what we're drinking right now. It is from Duckfoot Brewing Company. It's a double white APA. It's very citricky in flavor. It's got a nice hop taste to it. And let's go ahead and slug it down. Yeah, this is this is dangerous. This is a really dangerous white IPA. It's got a hint of a uh, bit of a flowery taste, but 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 a right amount, right? So sometimes you drink a beer and it, you don't want your beer to taste like roses, right? But a nice hint of some type of flower in there, I can taste. I taste a little bit um, of the nodes of some type of weird kind of petal. I don't know what it is, but it's definitely very flowery. It's light, and it's actually quite refreshing. So going back to your Vishal, is yes, it is. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Dad, um, we don't have any chug beers here today, but uh, but next week I will be bringing out the Tenacious Freak and Aquanuts big ass glasses. I missed the intro. How strong is that beer? The beer is eight point six. All right, 8.6. Look at this reception my dad gets. All right, welcome welcome to the show, Pops. Um, I tied it on a little bit last night, so I normally don't do that. I'm already feeling it, but we're already rolling out the show. Uh, it's 6 8.6, and it's delicious, Freak. So moving on, COVID news. Guys, I hope that you're staying safe. I see the vaccine is rolling out. Uh, I think that I should be up for it very soon. I think that they're going to loosen restrictions and find a way to get essential workers the shot quicker than normal. So hopefully sometime in March, I'll be getting vaccinated. I don't know what you guys think about that, but um, hopefully that wherever you are, whatever you're doing, that you're staying safe, you're being diligent. We should be getting out of this thing. Hopefully soon. Um, I'm hoping that we, uh, we can see the light of day by the summertime and uh, get back to, to getting out there and, and regular life and that kind of things. I mean, I don't think everyone will be going back to 100% normal life. I don't think there's going to be people that ever come back. I think there's going to be a small percent. I'll message you, going to mail you some loyal. Please do, Vishal. Please do, man. I would love that. I would love that. That would be awesome. I would love to go and support uh, some local beers. Thailand is opening up again in October. That's cool. You know, I definitely was thinking about going to Asia this summer. 
might have to replot my my travels again um but we'll get into that in a minute i want to talk about something that's coming up a uh, couple quick things in the news did you guys what does this guy mean to you if i put this in the news okay if i put this up here right now anybody know what that means anybody know what that is what story am i talking about this is gorilla glue if you don't know what this is this is an extremely extremely super strong <laughs> yeah dad extremely strong glue okay it's like super glue reinvented and, and it's nothing to mess with and um in the news this week there was a woman who ran out of uh <laughs> hair supplies if you will i don't know what the word for her for her uh, tracks or for her weave or something something to do with her hair king kong good guess jens but no so this woman, instead of using hair gel, instead of going and buying hair gel or doing, didn't see the actual video, only a news coverage of that woman. Yes, exactly. Um, she literally put this shit in her hair to keep her hair down. Not for like a day or something. I think for like a month. And it friggin' glued her hair to her skull. Like her skin of her skull, her scalp, whatever. And she couldn't get it off. And then I think she was trying to sue the Gorilla Glue company. And it's like... Are you kidding me? Like, what are you doing putting Gorilla Glue on your hair? Okay, I think they found a doctor here in Los Angeles where they flew her to, and, and he's going to perform a surgery. But just unbelievable. The balls of these people that, like, put Gorilla Glue. That I mean, this thing would probably hold, I don't know, a, a shelf? 50 pounds on a shelf? Or, you know, it's got, it's got some pretty strong qualities. It's definitely not made... For hair, and especially when you can get hair products for so cheap um, that are such a safer alternative. So I don't know if you guys had saw that. I thought I would bring that up. As long as I got Notch here, I am going to shout out because Notch is also friends with this guy. And big shouts out, Americans use everything over. <laughs> yeah, well, all right, Notch. I see where you're going. That's twice you went after Americans, all right? That's our beer and our excessive abuse of everything. Take it easy, buddy. <laughs> All right. Now, Notch is friends with this guy. and, and But yes, he is right. Yes. <laughs> That's my thing. Congratulations to my friend, Notch's friend. Um, his name is Max Huang. Woo! Max, big shouts out to you who booked a role as Kung Lao on the upcoming Mortal Kombat film. Really excited about that. Um, Max is a good friend of mine. He's a good friend of, a sh uh, I'm sorry, Notch's. And... Um, one of the cool thing is he got that role when he was here in LA. I remember him leaving to Australia to go and film that. So now you're seeing, uh, now you're seeing all the trailers for Mortal Kombat. The guy Kung Lao is a good friend of mine. He's the one with the weird like uh, that Asian rice farmer hat. It's it's like he's like I'm Kung Lao, and uh, yeah, really excited about it. And the cool thing about Max is, you know, he is amazing at martial arts like i think he was germany's wushu champion like he's definitely nothing to mess around with he was uh jackie chan's stunt teams uh one of their uh, up-and-coming stunt directors i know he stunt directed on bleeding steel and the movie the foreigner if you've never seen that so i'm really excited i'm really proud of max and i love to see my friends up on the big screen doing their things can't wait um unfortunately Hi, Calvin. Unfortunately, Mortal Kombat will be out on HBO on April 16th. So am I going to watch it? Hell yeah. One of my friends is in it. I'm definitely going to see it. So uh, I'll find some way to get it. Uh, American production. It's I believe it's Australian. Okay. It was filmed in Australian. Uh, it's filmed in Australia. But it's uh, it's got a huge cast of uh, really well-known. Foreigner was Jack. Yeah. Foreigner was awesome. Yeah. It was Jack, um, sorry, so yes, it was filmed in Australia by an Australian crew in production, and it is now being sold to Warner Brothers, and I think it's going to be on HBO Max. Um, so check it out. The, the trailer is flying around all your social medias. I'm sure somebody you know has it posted on Facebook. If not, you'll see it on my Facebook later this evening. So really excited about that. That's pretty fun. Um, what else can I say? Oh, the Texas Storm. You know, hearts and prayers going out to the people in Texas. I know what a snowstorm's like, but I grew up in Buffalo, New York, and it's pretty much just an ordinary day in um, in, in the winter time. But for people in Texas that aren't prepared for it, especially down in southern Texas, it can really, really screw you up. I mean, you got you got black ice, 
you got freezing pipes, um, just the, the amount of snow. And if you've never driven on snow or seen snow in the regular everyday city life can be uh, very dramatic. I remember I saw like two inches down in North Carolina and people were freaking out. Everybody, everything shuts down. They don't know how to handle it. In Buffalo, we got snow plows, we got salt trucks, we got everything to take care of the elements that come down from the sky. But places like Texas, they never seen anything like this. So they definitely um, ran into a lot of problems. I know that they had the whole power grid system. I'm not sure exact details of that, but uh, our prior, our prayers and hopes that things get better soon for the people in Texas. Um, yeah, so I hope that you guys don't suffer too much anymore. It's a tragedy. It sucks. People are dying. Um, but uh, hang in there, and uh, there's I know there's help on the way. So any donations, there's all kinds of donation spots where you can go ahead. And if you got 10, 15 bucks that you can spare, it does go towards something. I don't know what, but it goes towards something. You can help somebody out. So that's out there. Uh, what else before we want to get through the week in news? Oh, Kim Kardashian files for a divorce from Kanye West. Huh. Who knew, right? Thought that one was going to go forever. Anyway, well, this is what we're drinking, guys. We're drinking the Duckfoot Duckzilla Double White IPA. It's got a delicious taste, very citricky, got a nice flavor of hops brewing on there. I'm really enjoying this one. It's definitely a go-to beer. Uh, IPAs can be tricky because a lot of people don't like drinking a lot of them. They're super strong. They got a real rank taste to them. Well, they have a really heavy taste of hops, and they're not familiar with that. They want that really good cereal grassy flavor when you drink a beer. But this one really coming through with a delicious taste. Cheers, Aquanuts, and everybody else on the show. Thank you so much for watching and supporting. We are growing. We are growing. We are growing. I really like this one. I really like that one. Oh, man. All right, guys, another thing I want to talk about is I don't know if you've done this. I don't know if you've had this. You probably have it at some point. But um, like I was saying, uh, you know, this time I was hiking with my friend the other day. This time that we're going through is unprecedented. It reminds us, go Buffalo. Yes, it reminds us when we think back to most of us weren't alive during the, uh, the, the Spanish uh, epidem or pandemic and the Spanish flu and all that. But uh, if, you got, if you got some time over the next couple of weeks, be sure to go ahead and snap a picture of you wearing a mask. Try to do some candid shots. Try to get some kind of shots where you're just wearing a mask. And then you have those on file. Put them in a file folder on your computer. Tuck them away. Whatever. It doesn't friggin' matter. Just make sure that you have them. Make sure you have them because... Maybe you'll thank me 10 years, 15, 20, 40 years from now. As you look back and reflect back on your life, you lived through this, man. Um, you lived through the 2020, 21 uh, coronavirus pandemic where we all had to wear masks. I'm tired of wearing masks. We're in a lockdown for the last five. Wow. You're in complete lockdown in Czech Republic, huh? Yeah, it sucks, man. I know. Well, not, you know, like I said, just not, you lived in, in China, so you know what it's like to wear a mask, but... But just have these mask pictures so that you can go back one day and reflect and say, damn, man, that was a crazy time, right? It's just a crazy, crazy time. And um, I know it seems weird. It's like, it's like the people that never want to take pictures. But 20 years later, they wish they had those pictures. So take your pictures. Make sure that you have a few pictures of you wearing a mask. I know it seems silly, kind of weird, whatever. But you're going to want it years from now. And you're going to want to look back on it and be like, you know what? I remember that in like... You know, maybe something from that picture will draw you back and uh, maybe don't want to remember this time. Maybe, you know, I know it's been difficult on me and my family, but, um, you know, th the thing about it is you can't hide from what happened. And sometimes it's nice to look back and reflect on it. So be sure that you go ahead, take a couple of selfies with over the next month. So that way you just have it and you remember this time you reflect back on it. A teacher me naked in the snow. <laughs> well, you can do that too, Notch, with a mask. I don't know what you guys are doing in the Czech Republic, but I'll tell you what, I'm really looking forward to coming over there. <laughs> I can't wait, Notch. <clears throat> Looks like probably next year I'll be saddling up and heading that way. And um, cannot wait to get back on the saddle again. And that's why I want to go back into 
next segment, which is the show and tell segment. And guys, I know uh, that you guys are looking forward to some fun travel stuff. And this is a travel show, if you will. It's evolved into so much more. And, you know, I like it like that. That, that for me, has allowed me to still continue to entertain, to be creative, to bring shows like Reading Man Dan and Movie Man Dan. But the essence of the show is getting out there and travel. And, unfortunately, we haven't been able to do that in the last year. We had 30 inches of Celsius. Uh, <laughs> well, you know, that's... um. That is your choice, Jonatic, and I, I definitely respect that. So if you do wear a mask, you know, capture it. If you don't, that's fine too. But guys, today's show and tell is this bitching thing that's going to go ahead. I know it seems weird to have a materialistic possession to get you motivated, but I'm psyched. I'm ready to go. I'm going to be bringing you guys within the next two months, as Notch talked about spring, just to acknowledge the hellos from Barrel <laughs> You're a badass, Calvin. All right. No problem. Thanks for stopping by. Good to have you here. But I will be traveling in and around California during the month of March, April, and May. I'll be doing a lot of fun, cool hikes. They're still safe to go out and travel. They still add some value to people visiting L.A. You know, people come to L.A. and it is the entertainment capital. And they want to see the Hollywood. And they want to see the stars and all the lights and stuff like that. But actually, okay, there you go. Take a picture on the train. <laughs> but, but actually... Uh, Los Angeles is great for hiking because <clears throat> right in downtown Hollywood, there's a set of mountains that go through it. Or on the outskirts or on the beach and the coast and the uh, mountains. There's tons of places to go hiking, camping, and it's really nice and fun to see. So guys, I went ahead and got this baby right here. Check it out. This is a really fun hard shell backpack i am not getting paid i'm not getting sponsored but this is from norax okay is a great company uh this backpack is really fun and one thing that i really like about it is that it's got this hard shell right but as we open it up we can see this is for all the camera gear now i have a gimbal i have this little gorilla pod here okay you have your lenses all these little pockets and there's a little slot for your computer. So once I start going on really heavy travel, which I presume to be doing the next couple years, well, you can bring everything right here in this backpack and you can zip it up. It's hard shell so that the lenses, the, the stuff of value, the stuff that you're using mechanically for your camera is not going to get damaged. It's also got this hard shell on the backside. If you have a chance, go to Portugal. I was there last summer. Yeah, I, I hear Portugal's amazing. I would love to see Pauly there. I know he's there, but this thing is badass. One thing I really like about this, thank you, Junatic. One thing I really like about this, they have this little thing, right? This little thing folds up here. What What is this thing? See how it's, it kind of links back? This is where you slide your tripod legs in, okay? So if you're out hiking and you have your tripod or you're out, you know, vlogging or whatever, you can put your tripod legs in here it runs up the side of this thing and then you lock it in place here so the tripod is like right here really cool lots of fun good stuff that you, you need a good bag like this if you're carrying some equipment because it makes the efficiency really good you know when you have all your studio stuff just in one bag <laughs> yeah i know <laughs> it's it, it's definitely um it's cool it's sleek and i really enjoy it and i it suggest if you're going out and doing videos <clears throat> look I'd be the first to tell you that the gear doesn't mean anything, okay? It, I, I started going off with a little shaky selfie stick and, a, and an old iPhone 6. But as you evolve, as I'm getting better, as I'm continuing to grow, I got to put out better content, and the production of the content has to be a little bit better too, okay? Now, what that means, it doesn't necessarily mean, oh, it's got to be shot in 4K with amazing voiceover and all these cool little graphics. That helps. I'll tell you in a second, it cost $100, and then I got it on sale for $59.99. But Pops was gracious enough to give me a Christmas gift, so thank you so much. I cashed in on the Christmas gift. So 60 bucks on Amazon. I'll put the link down below if you're interested. But one thing that you can do in production value is you can be prepared. You can, you, you can always get better. And um, simple things like this are able to carry all of the stuff that you normally shoot a video with with you when you're out on the mountain or you're out in a city that you've never been to and just traveling, getting out. 
So this kind of thing, that preparation to get prepared can also be part of the production to get your videos up to scale and to make them better. Because I have some a lot of stuff, you know, you have microphones, you have voiceover stuff, you have stands, you have um, tripods, all this kind of stuff. And you can't, you can't really carry it with you. So having a bag like that is definitely a big help. And I'm excited to get back out there. So the first travel man, Dan, that you haven't seen in a while where I'm out traveling again will be, yes, Wonder Strudel's here. <laughs> Welcome to the show. All right. We'll be on March 19th. Okay, March 19th, you will see a couple of cool hikes, and I'll continue to drop more Travel Man and throughout the spring months. And then hopefully this summer, we're definitely going to be attacking um, some more uh, the southwest, other parts of California, Hawaii, and um, hopefully, you know, get back to Buffalo this summer. We'll see how the travel restrictions are. But guys, for people like Wonder Strudel that are just hopping on, thank you so much. We're about to do uh, the Black history month this is black history month so i want to go ahead and introduce you guys to bessie coleman bessie coleman was a pioneer in aviation she was the first black african-american pilot all right check her out this is bessie coleman all right maybe you guys have heard of her maybe you haven't a lot of people haven't she's one of the unsung heroes um she was born in a one-room shack in Texas in 19, 1892. They are important, but first you need to study how to do shoot composition and everything. I missed your comment, Tom. I missed the full thing. But yeah, there, there, there's, there's something to be said about that kind of thing. But for YouTube, Notch, you know, you can get like crazy movie scale. But the best thing to do for YouTube is just go out and press record and get going. And along the way, you start to learn how to get better. How do I get better at this? Like, I never was an editor, but I edit my vid own videos. It takes a lot of time. I go through a lot of crazy stuff. Luckily, I don't do any color coordination like they do on the movies, but it definitely helps as you continue to go to up your game with that 1% that I always talk about. Um, you know, just getting out there and getting going. It stops so many people, right? Oh, I don't have the right equipment. Oh, I, I don't know how to do this. I don't it's all a bunch of horse shit because I said those excuses before. And when I finally went out there and did it, a huge beauty dish one week ago and got some clothes and boots. Nice. Hell yeah. I want you to do a photo session with the travel man, Dan. But yeah, that's what it's all about. It's just going out there and, and, and press and record because getting done is getting better than perfect, right? Just getting it out there. You can always strive for perfection, but you can never start going that way unless you get going. Anyway, we're talking about Bessie Smith, guys. Give a shout out to her. She was the first African-American pilot. Now, after World War I, she got inspired by the pilots and their stories and all the stuff that they were talking about. Now, unfortunately, back then, not only was she African-American and there was a lot of segregation and, and people looked down on uh, African-Americans and they didn't allow them to join. But also, she was a woman. So... She met somebody and she flew. Somebody suggested that she go over to France and she trained with the fighter pilots over in France for like nine months and then came back to the U.S. Now, a lot of people were still excited about her kind of trajectory of her career, but they didn't allow her to be a pilot. So she became like one of those trick pilots that you see in air shows and things like that. And she became really good. All right. If you read up on her, you can definitely find out more about it. I'll be sure to put it down in the description. Uh, where you can find out more about her. Unfortunately, she did pass away when she was flying a plane and the engine failed. And um, she was, uh, it, well, the story goes, was her story made the movie? Uh, I don't know, but I don't know if you guys remember the movie Flyboys. It was um, it was a movie where about uh, Americans that had went over, yeah, Tuskegee Airmen. It was a movie about... Um, about uh, some pilots that went over to France to train, and they got really good. So I don't know if they took that from her story, but Bessie Coleman was the first African-American uh, pilot, okay? And check her out. Um, definitely really inspirational and somebody during Black History Month that you don't really hear about that often. So I want to bring that out of light. Uh, during this month, I'm always going ahead and trying to introduce someone new, some historical figure that created and definitely did something historic and wonderful and 
gave back to their not only their community but to the world and super cool chick is right that's exactly it read more about her down below and we're gonna move right on uh guys this is what we are drinking it is the duck azilla double white ipa i'm gonna slag slag this down just slag this down i'm gonna slam this down i'm gonna give it a good score i feel a good score coming on and then we're gonna go into what would you rather so here we go Refreshing. Really nice taste. Really, it's got something to bring to the table. I definitely feel the strength in it. If you can't tell, I'm not slurring like I was last week, but we're about halfway there. And, um, you know, that's part of the show, right? I remember, what would you rather? <laughs> that's, that's pretty much where, uh, well, I've been doing what would you rather all my life. I always do it. And, um, you know, one of the funny things about what would you rather is we had some of the greatest what would you rathers coming home from a movie match and i were actually roommates on a movie that we did with jackie chan called dragon blade and we would drive we were staying in this little desert town called akasi and then the the set was like an hour and a half into the desert they would pick us up like crazy early then on the ride home everyone's euphoric you're driving an hour and a half with a bunch of dudes all suited up in Roman gear. And I busted out, what would you rather? And we would, I mean, we were belly over laughing. People all around the world, good stuff. And um, that's kind of where this, what would you rather, is definitely a branch off of. I've always done, what would you rather? And uh, I always thought it was a lot of fun. So it was cool to do on the bus back then. And it's cool to do here on the show. But now I'm going to go ahead and rate this beer, the Duckazilla. Frank told me I'm still in shock. <laughs> yes, it is a beer show, but um, it was disgusting, but very fun. Yeah, it is a beer show, but so much more. And um, Notch, I'll go ahead and message you privately. I'd love to get you on for uh, one week in maybe March, and you do a show and tell with us. I'm going to be setting it up where I'm going to have viewers from all over the world popping in. So maybe you uh, would definitely like to be on the show. But now I'm going to go ahead and we're going to go right into the taste of the Duckzilla Double White IPA. Loved it. Absolutely delicious. An easy, subtle drink. Had a great mix ratio of IPA hops to a citric flavor. I like the aroma that the grapefruit brought from the first crack opener of the can. I love the lemon taste of it. I like the real small hint of the flower taste. It was a delicious beer. It was smooth. It was easy to drink. There was nothing wrong with the taste of this beer. And that's why I'm going to go ahead and give the Duckzilla a 4.5. Beautiful score. Really coming close to that next level. All right, we've yet to get a 5.0, but this one's pretty dang close. I really enjoyed it. It's got some strength to it, right? One thing I definitely like is I like strong beers that don't taste like strong beers. So this one definitely brings that to the table, and I'm enjoying it. Now the price. I bought this one at Total Wine and Beverage. Okay. Excuse me. Great store here in California. Love their beers. Love their selection. It's three ninety nine. This can plus tax. Okay, so you have four dollars times eight plus another nickel. So you're looking at something or close to around four dollars and thirty five cents. By the time you totally cash it out, I feel like it's a good deal. I feel like because it's a strong beer, because it's an eight point six. If you're going to spend $4.30 on a beer, this is not a bad beer to go to because it's strong, it tastes good, and, well, you will definitely be, um, you'll definitely enjoy this one. I don't know how, I don't know how else to say it. It's just pretty cut and dry. There ain't much going on. Definitely like the price point at $3 or $4.30, and that's why I'm going to give it a score of a 4.0. 4.0 was a great score. All right, now design. Okay, let's go into the design of this sucker. Take a look at this. Now, I love this design. It was the one that drew me closest, and I was able to grab it amongst hundreds of beers. We got Duckzilla. You know I'm a huge monster fan. Love Godzilla. King Kong's my favorite. Love how he's retching through the streets. Love the name. I love the name play. 
Okay, it's the Duck Foot Brewing Company, and they created the Duckzilla. And why? Because it's so strong. It's 8.6%, and it'll smash you, right? Godzilla will burn your face off. Why is your face getting red? Because I'm getting drunk, Dad. Okay? I promise you I'll be safe. But yes, that is awesome. I love this. Um, they got the electric. The one thing I would have changed about this thing, you see this? That's That kind of tells me that he's trying to say something. He should have been like firing beer off there or some kind of lasers, you know? I guess that's lasers. Um, but but really love it. I love how it says double YPA. Um, the duck reminds me of the Baltimore Orioles. <laughs> that's funny, Michelle. Um, Baltimore Orioles suck. Yankees, yeah. All right. Love the font. I love that it says right there, 8.6%. Really love the comic book style. It's got the grainy stuff. Like I said, it's the cheap can, but then the sticker is everything. The label is everything on these things. Okay? Really enjoy it. Guys, I don't think we've had one yet. So why not? This beer is worthy of it. The design is great. You got to love super-sized ducks and monsters. I'm going with the design and giving it a perfect score of a 5.0. Woohoo! Our first one, guys. Holy crap, Ola. All right. Duckzilla. Okay. Really excited about that. Now, accessibility. This one, I don't know how accessible it is to you guys. Um, I would say that uh, if you're in California, you might be able to find it here and there. If you go to their website, that's of course accessible. But being in Europe, uh, being anywhere in Asia, being somewhere in South America, this one is going to be hard to get, right? This one is definitely very specific to the Duck Foot Brewing Company. Um, if you live in parts of the United States like Florida or Raleigh, North Carolina, this one might be hard to get. Now you can always order it off their website, but I'm saying going into the store, pulling it off of any store, um, anywhere in the world, it's going to be hard. So therefore, I'm going to have to go and give it a breakdown score, a score that's going to be a little bit lower. Although they're here in California, I've only seen it one place. And unfortunately, I'm cutting the line at accessibility, and I'm giving it a 2.5. Not the best, but it is hard to get to. Thanks. Make me think of pecan ducks. So good. Yeah, that was last week's What Would You Rather, Dad. Uh, hopefully that you chose the Beijing Kaoya. All right, <laughs> All right. the Travel Man Dan X Factor. Travel Man Dan loves IPAs. I love when the IPA is strong, you're feeling good, and it's light and easy to drink. There's some IPAs that you got to roll through that you got to drink that, my gosh, the, the, the small pint glass is like drinking bad breath and sewer water together. This wasn't that flavor. This was refreshing, it was clean, it was smooth. The complex flavors of all the citric flavors were amazing. Okay, really enjoyed it. Really like that. Love that Godzilla, uh, or Duckzilla, was a cool label. And, um, you know, the Travel Man Dan Factor is solid. It's strong. But I go back to this, hell yeah, absolutely. Would I recommend it? Hell yeah, absolutely. Should I think you should drink it? Yeah, hell yeah, absolutely. And that's why I'm giving it a score of a 4.0. Okay, the Trout Man Dan X Factor is just that it's a bitchin' beer. All right, you got to try it. It's strong. It's good for the price. It's amazing in taste. And if you're holding this just on the side of the party, I don't know, man. Might be the coolest dude in the room. <laughs> yeah, Nate. Welcome. Welcome, Nate. Look at what we're doing. We got Nate in the house. All right. I have Nate and Vishal in the house. Welcome, everybody. I'm my best buds. This is what we're drinking. I'm going to rally up the score and tell you what the Duckzilla score was today. <clears throat> Here we go. So, uh, let's see. Nine. 13.5. Okay. Eight. Seven. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, people around the world, 
viewers of the weekly beer and video review show with travel man dan sit back relax we have a new high score it is a new friggin' high score what's up team yes i love it guys i can't believe it but it has broken through the high score nate i gotta bring you one of these buddy i think i'm coming to your house in april and uh i gotta bring you one this one is cracked the high score ladies and gentlemen we have a new high score at the Duckzilla ringing in at a 20. A score of a 20. Very close to a 25. I would say that the accessibility was the only thing that brought it into above the 20s, but it reached it. It reached the 20s. Holy crap. Amazing beer. Definitely love it. And um, I don't know. Uh, shot time because you have a new high score. <laughs> Listen, I would love to do a shot. I'm really hungover from yesterday. I'm going to be filming a bunch of videos this afternoon. We're going to have to pull off on the shots on this one next time. I promise next time, Drunatic, I will open up the show next week with a shot. Okay, how's that? Please, you know, get, get, well, next week. All right. Guys, I'm so excited about the Duckzilla. But now, it's time to go to the next one, the What Would You Rather, and let's roll right into it. What Would You Rather, please go ahead, let me know now, or let me know after the show. Unfortunately, I don't know what's going on, Drunatic. I've seen that you have messaged Crown Royal Shots next week for sure. I'll open up with a shot. Drunatic, I saw that you've mentioned a few times your answers for, for some reason on that particular video. Your comments aren't sticking. I don't know what happens. I don't have you blocked. I don't have you edited. Um, I, I'm not really sure. Um, do chocolate shot instead. I could do chocolate. Well, actually, no, I can't. They're over there. Shoot. I can't reach them. They're, uh, I, I'd have to leave, but I will do I promise. Drunatank, I will do one next week at the start of the show. I will do a Crown Royal Salted Caramel. Okay? Salted Caramel. All right. But let's do what would you rather, guys. Let me know down in the comments now, or the best thing to do is wait till this episode is over and leave me down in the comments your five what would you rathers. Here we go. What would you rather? Would you rather go now? I know that there's some turmoil over there now, but let's pretend there isn't. Let's pretend that it's safe, everything is glorious, and world peace has infected everyone. Okay? I'm talking about Bagan Miramar. Okay, you're in this crazy place where there's over a thousand ancient temples. All right, and those really crazy, weird Southeast Asians. Don't worry, we want you to be wasted. <laughs> I promise, next week, next week. These crazy uh, Southeast Asian temples where they're like this like sandy color. I don't know how, how to explain it, but um, if you haven't checked it out, Bangon Miramar looks awesome. Or would you prefer to go to Suzaville? Nambia. Nambia. Okay. Suzaville, Nambia, if you don't know it, is like this epic desert with these amazing, like beautiful sands and they're bright orange. Uh, Burma's on my list too. And um, right now is not the best time. But if you've never seen Nambia, it, th this particular desert area is like the sands of Utah and Arizona, that real, real rich red and orange. But these wild, crazy sand dunes and um it's supposed to be one of the most epic places that you can take a shot how nice yeah nate you take a shot so um yeah i don't know which one you prefer both of them have hot air balloon tours so i'm a little afraid of heights i don't know what happened but uh i would definitely look forward to either one i want to go into a hot air balloon and see what it's like i want to go ahead and take myself through the um through that turmoil and get past that that fear that I have of, of, of being in an air balloon. I love Africa and I love Asia. This one is really hard for me. I really want to see Miramar. I really want to see those temples. But I really love Africa and I love sand dunes. Being from Buffalo, I think it has something to do with maybe seeing like fields of snow. But uh, I definitely want to see those orange sands. So if I could, my preference would be Nambia. I would definitely like to see both, and I will see both. But for me, on this particular show, Nambia is my choice. All right, move it. Oh, come on, dude. Really? You got to bring up farts? <laughs> Who? That, well, I don't know. Thanks, dude. First of all, anybody that claims somebody else's fart smell, their farts stink. I want to go air balloon. Uh, yes. Ooh, in Italy. Very cool. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. 
Right now, Michelle eats a lot of Indian food and Afghan food. Who do you think farts smell? All right, moving right along. Number two. <laughs> All right, number two brings in the pitcher. <clears throat> All right, which food would you rather have? It is a chicken dish, okay? <laughs> it is a chicken dish. It is a chicken dish. It is from France. It is heavy gravy. It is heavy sauce. I mean, not, when I say gravy, I mean not traditional American gravy. It is heavy sauce. It is a bit of a butter and wine sauce. And I pr pronounce this right. Chicken fracasi. Okay, visit the troll. All right. <laughs> Check that out, guys. What would you rather have? Chicken fracasi. Okay, it is a bit of a French dish. Okay, look at that. This is all like butter and white wine cream, and it's baked, and then the last uh, little bit. <laughs> Thank you, gents. All right, this is an amazing dish, and then when you pull one of these chicken breasts out, you can go ahead and put the gravy or the sauce, whatever you want to call it, all over the chicken. Definitely a delicious dish and tantalizing at the taste, okay? I've never been. It's a little sacred. Oh, yeah, scared of ice, yeah. Or, or, do you prefer, from Japan, sashimi, okay? Yeah, it does look awesome. You prefer raw fish, all right? We got your salmon in there, okay? We have some white tail right here. We have some yellow fin. We have all different tunas. We have all kinds of delicious raw fish, right? Now, you have to be able to be game for raw fish. You have to be able to grab that sashimi, yeah, and dip it right into the soy sauce mixed with a little dollop of wasabi. This one is absolutely amazing. I love the taste of fresh fish. Sashimi for me, I don't eat mushrooms. Chicken, tuna eye, yeah, yeah, I got definitely the tuna eye. I, um, which one are you guys having? Are you guys having the chicken, Frankies? This delicious, well-deserved plate from France? Or are you having this one, the sashimi? The raw fish. Let me know which one you guys are game for. This one is tough because I love fish. But I also love chicken. Okay. Nate going with the sashimi. Nate is the eat it or not guy. Okay. Now, for me, I love a good buttery creamy wine sauce. Delicious, right? Mixed in there with a couple of taters. You got yourself a meal. But wow, wow, oh wow. I'm with Nate. I'm going with the Japanese sashimi. I could go for the one with the chicken thyme. Raw fish is king. I could, I could probably eat this whole plate myself in under a minute. I absolutely love sashimi. I love sushi. I've been to Japan. I love fresh fish. I think that there's something about it that you feel after you eat. Um, now the chicken, there's nothing to slouch at. I like them both. But for this, what would you rather? I'm going with the sashimi. All right, number three. What would you rather? Guys, what would you rather? You got to listen to them. Who do you like more? It's a pop star, super phenomena. Do you like Bruno Mars or Justin Timberlake? <laughs> oh, let me see. Yeah, let's have it, dude. I'll crush you on it. All right, <clears throat> what, are you, what are you guys going with? You going with Justin Timberlake or are you going with... I like Danny the most. <laughs> Thank you, Notch. Thank you very much. Do you like Justin Timberlake or Bruno Mars? That's a tough one. I like Bruno Mars. I think he's good. I think he's really talented. It, to me, his Super Bowl um, show was still the best I've seen in the last 25 years. I thought he was brilliant. Um, but yeah, I'm going with neither. <laughs> I'm going with Timberlake. All right. Um, I just like that he's... Um, a little bit older I like now what I mean by that is older from what he was to the music that he was putting out when he was younger I don't mean that he's older than Bruno Mars I mean that oh a lot of people are mixed here I like it probably Guar <laughs> oh Guar okay so for me I just like Justin Timberlake's sound I think uh, his sounds have evolved throughout the years from when he was with the boy band to now what he's doing uh, with duets and things like that. I think his music is great. And I, I mean, uh, Bruno Mars is amazing too, but uh, 12 Wild hit the like button. Yes, guys, hit that like button. Go ahead, give me, come, give me some love. We're moving on with question number four. Good taste, Nate. <laughs> All right, Notch and Nate, have you guys ever met? I don't know if you've ever met each other. Um, Maybe, maybe before at the bar in Yong Kong Lu or something like that. Duets. Yeah. All right. Number four. 
what would you rather? Would you rather go to the zoo? All right, the animals are live. Um, they're they're roaring. They're you know all kinds of cool stuff. You have the aquarium over there. You have the, the apes and the primates. You have all the fun stuff that you see at the zoo. Or do you prefer to go to the Natural History Museum? Do you want to go and see about when woolly mammoths roamed the earth and what it was like for the cavemen during the Ice Age? Which is your preference? Do you like to find out about stuff that happened a hundred years ago and look at the artifacts, or do you like to look at the living? Uh, right now, JT is which makes him a different. Okay, yeah, that's true. He does have one of the greatest producers ever, so uh, that helps. But hey, what do you guys think? Would you guys go to the zoo or the natural history museum? Let me know down now, or let me know later. For me, I love the zoo. Yep. Definitely love Natural History Museum. I love to find out about stuff that um, that is, um, well, it's kind of it's part of our history. It's everything that we're made of, right? But for me, I love to see the animals. Okay, I love apes, gorilla fish, lion, uh, <laughs> gorilla fish, shark, lion, polar bear, bird. Um, I don't. I love the zoos. It's sad when you see animals cooped up like that. Nate doesn't like it anymore. I still like it a lot. I used to go there a lot. I don't like zoos, but I like to see wild animals. Also like history. Tough choice, right? What would you rather, Notch? Then all right. It's a tough one, right? It's a tough one. So, but for me, I'm gonna choose the zoo. I like the zoo because. It's weird because I I went through this acting exercise years ago, man. I, I don't know where like I was playing a drug addict, right? Often that, yeah. I was playing a drug addict, and they have a lot of little quirks to them, right? You ever see somebody that's like really sketched out and drugged? For myself, history for sure with two young kids, the zoo every day. Yeah, you know if you got if you got something wrong with you, you got some drugs or something, something going on. L.A. is a good place to do a case study because you're gonna see a lot of people like that. But if you don't. You pull from animals at the zoo. You go and watch animals, a bird. And you, you put it into your little guy, you know. A bird is sketchy, right? You, you know, you're all tweaked out. So I like to go to the zoo and not only study them as animals, but then play them into the characters I was playing. <laughs> yeah, and and that, that for me is a lot of fun. I love the beauty of an animal. I know they're cooped up, and I know you're going to have people that are adamant about, it's a zoo. I don't really like zoos either. I like animal parties, but not zoos. Yeah, I know people I like that, but how else are you going to see these animals, right? If you don't go out in the wild, how else are you going to see them? So I'm kind of with the, the zoos for this particular what would you rather. I would love that they were free. Went around once as Wani Zoo, and it was the last straw for me. Oh, Taiwan Zoo. Okay. Well, Nate, I hope that maybe you get a chance to take Anderson to the San Diego Zoo. I'll meet you there. All right, anyway, moving on to number five. Number five is inspired by something we talked about a little bit earlier. So I'm going to go ahead and add that to you. Um, which would you rather? Would you rather for an entire year you have a hat? Okay, it could be this hat. Okay, this hat's a little banged up a little bit. Um, any hat, a Bill's hat a Yankees hat, a Savers hat, whatever hat you want. Would you rather it glued to your head with the Gorilla Glue? Okay, you can't take it off. You got to sleep with it. You got to drive with it. You got to go to work with it. You got to make love with it. All right, okay. <laughs> you, got, you have the hat glued to your head. Or would you prefer... <laughs> Aquanuts, thank you. Or would you prefer that you could never take your shoes off for an entire year? Socks and all. Okay, have a wonderful week, everyone. Michelle, thank you, my friend. Love you, bro. Thanks for showing up to the show. Have a great week. Have fun with the girls. And I'll talk to you later. Thanks, V. Or you have your shoes glued onto your feet. Which would you rather? I mean, that's a tough one. Think about it. Anywhere you go, you have to wear your hat. You <laughs> Well, San Diego's hat. Everyone's going with the hat. <laughs> All right. Now, when you wear your shoes with socks, obviously it's going to get wet and stinky, and, 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 and your skin's going to get damaged. When you pull this thing off, right, when you pull the hat off or you pull the socks off, under so understanding this is um, 
this is a, an exercise I'm doing here on what would you rather. Nothing is getting hurt, okay? You're not getting hurt. You're not ripping any skin. I don't wear hats and I don't wear shoes for most of the hair. Difficult choice. <laughs> not this one's for you. For me, I'm going with the hat all the time, all the time. I love wearing a hat. Um, there's something about it. And, you know, I don't have bad hair either, okay? I'm not losing my hair. I don't have a crazy hairline or whatever. I, my hair is solid. My dad's hair is freaking immaculate, and he's in his 60s. But I love wearing a hat, so go ahead. Glue the sucker down. I'm looking forward to it. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this segment of What Would You Rather. Thanks a lot for watching. Let's keep rolling on to the next segment, and that is... The next beer. Guys, I'm excited about it. Nate is here. We are bringing out the red, okay, the red bottle cap opener. And I'm excited to drink this beer. We've done this beer before, I believe, but we're bringing it back for a redo. I will take Danny's hat and I promise I will not hurt it. Well, thank you, Drunatic. Guys, I'm talking about a fun beer, a beer that maybe you have seen before on vacation. Maybe you haven't. If you have, go check it out. It's a nice beer. We're going to go ahead and review the Chang Classic from Northern Thailand. Now, Chang is probably my least favorite of all the Asian beers. I never really enjoyed it. I don't know what it was about it. Um, this beer never really rang a bell with me. I drank a shitload of them with Nate in Thailand. But that's because it was there. I didn't you know, know much about it. And I wanted to keep drinking it. It's definitely a really good and cheap beer if you can it's a kind of your run-of-the-mill beer but let's go ahead and crack open this one and we'll get started on the chong classic okay haven't had one of these in a while all right there we go okay that's got that weird skunky green bottle taste or smell to it right away as i crack open the chong i can smell that it's been trapped in a bottle a little bit but then i go back to it after it's all wafted out it's not so strong Okay, it's going to be a light beer. I know already what they taste like. Let's go ahead. I'll show you what it looks like. As you can see, it's very, very light looking. Okay, really, really easy drinking, carbonated. You can see this is like your standard lager or pilsner. Not, not really dark. It's not going to be super strong. It is only... 3.5% alcohol, so not a very strong beer, okay, but a fun beer. As you can see, I can see right through you. You can see my big my big nose, and let's go ahead and take a swig of the Chong Classic. Not bad. And you got any Czech beers in the U.S.? Yeah, I, I think I can. If you could recommend some notch, I would love to hear about that. I like Sing Down Tiger better, but totally okay. Yeah, that's it, exactly it. You know, there there's better beers than Chang, okay? Sing Tao is one of them. Um, I definitely don't really care for Tiger, but I think the reason I never cared for Tiger, the place that I was going to that was using Tiger never cleaned their taps. So I would always get a really bad headache and sick after drinking a lot of Draft Tigers. My favorite, if I'm in Asia, would probably be... Um, a beer called Harbin, okay? It's a, it's a northern Chinese beer. I've never seen it in the United States, but that was probably my favorite of all the Chinese beers um, and Asian beers. And then next would probably be Sapporo in Japan. But the Chang, okay, the first sip, it's, it's what you think a beer is going to taste like. It's light. It's really easy. Okay, it's got a cereal grassy taste as I referred to earlier. It's just really something that you're going to, you know, pull up. Maybe you're going to be in a bar called Oops for about 12 hours and you're going to drink 15 of them. All right, maybe you're on the, the beach in Phuket and you're going to go to the all night uh, moon party. This is what you want to get stocked up on. This is a beer that you can drink a lot in volume. This is a beer that is really not that bad that I taste it now. Something about it before wasn't uh, agreeing with me. But nevertheless, Chang beer from northern Thailand. It's a classic beer in and around Southeast Asia. And it's got a great first sip to it when you're talking about standard beer flavor. Moving on to the next week's video. Guys, we're going to not really go dark, but I won't be putting out a video next week. I will be doing the Just One Beer on next Friday night. So if you could join me, it'll be next Friday night at 7, 7 p.m. 
Pacific Standard Time. So some of you guys, it's going to be really late. I will be going live. I'll be doing just one beer. We haven't brought it back since I've been here in California. So I thought this is a nice little gap to bridge us into March. Two biggest exports are Pilsner or Bud. Uh, okay, I'll try. I'll try the pill. I think we've drank that one. Yeah, is that the one with the rubber cork on it? Notch, we drank that one here on the show. But maybe I could bring it back. Um, I forget what what it, what we called it, but but definitely would like to try it, and uh, I will do my best. Thank you, Wonder Strudel. I'm always looking forward to you on the show. I appreciate it, guys. But next week, um, we're not going to be putting out a regular video in the morning, but we will be doing a just one beer, just so I can continue to post a video every two videos every week. So just one beer is next week. Hope that you guys can join me. Um, looking forward to it, and then in March we'll be really cranking up. Uh, a fun right away at the start of March, the Dr. Seuss week. I will be cranking out five videos for every day during Dr. Seuss week. Then we'll be doing Food Friday, reading, uh, I mean, uh, Travel Man Dan will be back. We'll be doing a lot of hikes. I'm going to try to get 10 hikes video. I'm going to try to do, I'm sorry, six pack of hike videos for people that I want to travel around LA within uh, the next few months and 10 for the year because I really think that it provides no we'll be doing beer review as, as well but just one beer is just to keep the algorithm going i want to try some fun stuff i got a delicious beer that i want to try with you guys so look forward to that episode i am and now it's time for borrow's favorite this day in history guys this day in history is fun i'm going to ramble through it i'm not a history teacher i'm not a history professor i just like history if you know of a history teacher if you know of someone that would love to do uh, a history segment on a show like this. Send me their send me their information. I'll reach out to them. We need a history teacher. We need a professor. So then I can uh, boom. Let's bring it on over to such and such. We'll split the screen. We'll bring somebody that's really knowledgeable that can really go ahead and bring this show to the next level. I would love to hike in the U.S. See, there you go. That hope. Oh, uh, Tunatic. Until you can do that, let me bring some value to you and show you these cool videos. But yeah. So if you know of anybody, let me know. But now, rolling on, on this day in history, February 21st, 1804, the very first locomotive by, who knows what the history is doing to be. Yes, I love that, to understand it all. Thanks, Byron. All right, in 1804, the first locomotive by Richard Trevelich runs for the first time along the tramway of the Pandarian Ironworks and Methohar Trifidel Wales. I completely botched all those names, and I'm very aware of that. So if you are from Wales, I'm very sorry about that because I probably screwed up the railway, and I probably screwed up the name of the town. But on this day in 1804, the very first locomotive trains, right? They were started by this guy, Richard Trejovich, and his very first model of the train. So, on this day in history, February 21st, 1848, Karl Marx and Frederick Engels published the Communist Manifesto in London. Whoa, that really changed a lot of things, right? Really got things that people started thinking a different way, huh? So if you haven't ever read the Communist Manifesto, I suggest you check it out just for some type of perspective, right? Now, what these two authors or what these two, I don't know, Karl Marx what his title would actually be because he has a lot of titles, but they've created this communist manifesto, this way to live for the communist people, and it went on to really change a lot of history. So on this day in history, it was published in London in 1848. On this day in history, on February 21st, 1885, the Washington Monument was revealed and dedicated to the city of Washington, D.C., Woohoo! The Washington Monument. If you don't know that, that's that weird phallic kind of pointing stick that's down there at the Washington Mall. Okay, the Washington Monument. And uh, yeah, if you haven't seen it, I definitely suggest you check it out. D.C. is always a fun trip. Um, if you don't live in D.C. or have never been to D.C., I think going there from a different country and seeing all the buildings and all the crazy uh, stuff that you you know probably seen on the news at some point is really inspirational and it's really motivational and just really interesting to see so on this day in history in 1885 the washington monument 
was revealed and dedicated to the city of Washington, D.C. On this day in history, and on February 21st, 1918, the Carolina parakeet dies in captivity at the Cincinnati Zoo. Okay, and that's what we were talking about earlier, the zoos. It died in captivity, and why is this important? Because after that last parakeet died, it was the extinction of the Carolina parakeet. If you don't know, go ahead and research the Carolina parakeet. It was a parakeet that was um, indigenous to the southern states of the United States, and it slowly dwindled out after the 1800s, and eventually the last one to die was on 1918 in a Cincinnati Zoo, and they are extinct. I don't know if they're bringing some type of breed back. I don't know how they would do that, but it's a very interesting parakeet. And a lot of the parakeets that you see in stories and movies from past, especially uh, literature that was written, yeah, I know, it's sad. It's sad to see any type of animal extinct, right, was of that parakeet species. But on this day in history, February 21st, 1965, writes human rights activist Malcolm X was shot dead by the Nation of Islam in Auburn Ballroom in New York City. 40 years old, right? Okay, Malcolm X was shot. Now, Ma Malcolm X, if you never understood him or, you know, did any research on him, a lot of people are quick to write him off because he felt like, they felt like he was, um, well, he was a bit of a terrorist, I guess. I, mean, I don't want to say in those words, but a lot of people don't like him. He's had a, a tumultuous career as a human rights activist. If you read up on his story, he's actually a really fascinating person. And it was sad to see his life get cut short because you never knew what kind of influence that his, um, that his historic run as an activist was going to lead to for many, many people. So it's sad to see that. I actually read a lot of books and stories and did a lot of research on Malcolm X. And my initial thought of him was not good. But after reading and learning a lot about him, I could definitely see why people liked him and my way of thinking towards him had absolutely been changed. So sad to see, but on this day in history, he was shot. I don't know if anybody was alive who is watching this stream right now remembers that day, but definitely a sad day, not only for American history, but for the world history because he had a lot to give and um, it would have been nice to see what he had done in the later parts of his career. On this day in history, February 21st, 18, no, sorry, 1989, okay? Reds manager Pete Rose meets with the commissioner, Pete Uberoth, and commissioner-elect Bart Giamatti to discuss his doings and betting with the Cincinnati, Cincinnati Reds. Okay, a lot of Cincinnati in today. Now, this is historic because this would eventually set up the trial for Major League Baseball to ban and expel Pete Rose from baseball for history. I mean, Charlie Hustle, come on, will you guys friggin' let the guy back in? If you guys don't know about Pete Rose, check it out, especially if you're in Europe. He's one of the greatest baseball players ever. He had one of the greatest histories of hits, and um, I think he still holds the, the hit, the single hit, historic record but he was banned from baseball because not only as a manager but also as a player he was betting on uh, his team so he played for the Cincinnati Reds and what he was doing is he was going ahead and throwing bets for Cincinnati to win and placing money on that and people thought you know that's unethical that's on you know that's not you can't do that you can't bet if you're playing because you could potentially be throwing the game in favor of you Profiting for the money, but that wasn't the case. It was nicknamed Charlie Hustle. The guys would go. The guy would go balls to the wall in every play. He was always betting to win, and unfortunately, they kicked him off of baseball. They kicked him out of baseball forever. I'd love to see Pete Rose in the Hall of Fame. I'd love to see for this ban to be lifted. Um, of all the crooked shit that goes on with all major league sports, I mean, this is probably. You know, he's, he's done his time, right? He's, he's one of the all-time greatest, if not the all-time greatest. And let's go ahead and get this thing washed under the rug and uh, understand where we can learn from this, make rules and adaptations to the players now so they don't make the same mistake as Pete Rose, and at least let the man in the Hall of Fame. That's this day in history. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Once again, I'm on the hunt. I want to get somebody in here for March to do this. We are drinking the Chong Classic.
from Northern Thailand. It's a delicious Pilsner. It's got a refreshing grassy feel to it. Not a lot of complex flavors. Just a really go-to beer that you're going to grab and you're going to drink a six-pack and still feel good. Let's suck this one down and I'll let you know what my second flavor of this glass is. Yeah, really light, easy. I'm not getting any flashback. Is that the stronger version? It's not, Nate. This is the weaker version. It's not the stronger version. It is the classic. I think I, I said before, I'm losing my eyesight in the light because it's written so small, but this is not the very strong one. It is um 5% alcohol. I'm sorry. I think I said 4 point something. It was 5%, so it still isn't a super strong beer, but they do make a strong one. It's a delicious, refreshing beer that you might have had before in Thailand. They make it here in the States. I got the burps, but moving right along, yeah, it's a quality SEA beer. And to be honest with you, my perception of it has definitely changed because these last two sips have been really tasty. It wasn't one of my favorite beers. I think I drank a lot of these in Thailand. Um, Sing Ha, is that the what it's called? Uh, I drank a lot of those. And there was another beer. I don't quite remember the other beer I drank. But like Nate said, it's a good quality, light, Southeast Asian beer. All right, moving on. What are you reading? What are you watching? I, I have a price. I You know what? I'm going to price it for where I know I can get it here in the United States. I will take that into consideration. And that's a great point, Jens, because a bottle like this might be something, something, in the United States, but it's also going to be a lot cheaper probably in Thailand. But what are you reading? What are you watching? Guys, what am I reading? I pulled up the old script from Troy Duffy, and I'm reading The Boondock Saints. Leo, yes. I like Leo beer. It's tough to find. But I'm reading the script, The Boondock Saints. I don't know if you guys remember that movie. It was uh, William Dafoe, I believe, and it's a great movie. Um, I've just started it. I haven't seen it in a long time. It's, um, it's about Irish gangsters and this kind of stuff. So if you like it, um, I definitely suggest checking it out. Great movie. It was a great movie. Um, I'm reading, I'll put down, it's like Drew's Script Ramas or something. I found this really cool site where you can get all these free uh, movie scripts. And me as an actor, but also me as an avid reader. I definitely think it's a lot of fun. It was a firefight. <laughs> I think it's a lot of fun. And um, it definitely can help me. It's one of those things that you don't need the agent. You don't need the producer. You don't need anybody hiring. But you can get better as an actor. Read a script. Read it all the time. Read one a day. Read two a day. Like, get good at understanding a script. Okay? Because <clears throat> as an actor, that's like something that you should be well versed on. Because if you're working on all this stuff and you, you know this is another tool that you can you know carve out and make really good, it's just understanding a good script. Favorite scene from any movie. That is a good scene. And um, you know, it doesn't cost anything. It's free on the internet. So that's what I'm reading. The Boondock Saints. I'm gonna be really pushing hard for this spring. I'm probably gonna try to read a script every two days. So next week I'll have a new one. I'm really going to be pushing through. There are about 100 pages. But it really helps you as not only an actor, but as a person to kind of think outside the box. Uh, your imagination is definitely brought to light and don't have to read a full novel. One thing I definitely like about this is once I've seen the movie, I already know who the characters are. But then when I reread the, um, the script... Parks and Recreation, nice. When I when I reread the script, I'm able to put the characters from the movie into context of the script. So it makes for a fun read. I definitely suggest you checking it out. I'll put down in the description where you can find some cool scripts. Or you can just Google free scripts, free movie scripts. Uh, Drew's Rama, or Rama, Drew Script or Rama is where I'm going to. And uh, it's a lot of fun. Definitely suggest if you don't read scripts, uh, that you might want to try it. If you're an actor, you should definitely do it. Yeah, Ron Swanson. All right, love it. Okay, so that's what I'm reading. What am I watching? Holy cow, you got to check this one out. This one is awesome. It's a new show that I started. I um, was just kind of skimming through something that I wanted to check out. I watched the first season. It's absolutely wonderful. I'm still coming down from the Gambit, the Queen's Gambit. But I definitely suggest checking it out. On Netflix, it's a USA production, um, USA the channel, and it's called The Sinner. 
and I believe the producer is Jessica Biel, but she was also the actress, and the other actor is the uh, Bill Pullman, and it, it, it's this really crazy, dark, psychological thriller. Um, there's, I believe, eight episodes in the first season. It is absolutely awesome. The way that Bill Pullman's character is, and Jessica Biel is amazing in this movie. I, I mean, this this t television show. It's um this weird, quirky, small little New York town, and they have all this um, well. I'll let you watch the first season because it's about this case about a woman who, who stabs a guy on the beach and then there's a lot more to the story. If you haven't seen it, I suggest you start it. It's called The Sinner. It's on Netflix. Watch season one. It's called season one Cora. Because I didn't know that. I just put it on and I started with season three. But um, each season is labeled by the main character. I'm watching the weekly period. <laughs> Junatic, love and light. Yes, thank you. But yeah, I definitely suggest you check that out. It's called The Sinner. Um, really well done. It's like a dark and more advanced written NCIS, Criminal Minds type stuff. Uh, Jessica Biel is great. Bill Pullman is awesome. And that's what I'm watching. Let me know down in the comments, whether now or later, what you're reading, what you're watching. I'd love to know. All right, guys, we're going back to the Chong. And then I'm going to leave you with the score. And, the, and, and then we're going to wrap things up with the quote of the week. All right, the Chang, sucking it back. Yeah, I, we have season three. The third season's out now. Aquanauts, uh, check it out. All right, Chang beer. Definitely really good, okay? When I first remember Chang, I remember sometimes a skunkiness, okay? Something with the green bottle. This was not the case. This had a nice mix of flavor and a little bit of aroma with each sip. It's got a very malty, cereal, light taste to it. Okay, it's easy. It's drinkable. You could definitely take down a bunch of them. I'm not going to knock it. I think it's a really good standard premium lager. That's why I'm going to go ahead and give it a really good score of a 3.5. Look, guys, if you're going to have these standard beers, if you're going to have a light SEA option, okay, Southeast Asian option. Chang has got a great flavor at the, at the taste of, of, you know, I will try to comment again after the show. Thank you, Jordan Tech. Yeah, I don't know why your last comments weren't showing up, but that's what I'm going to give it. Now, the price. This is a good point by Jens. Aqua might be on location now. All right. Thank you, Wonderstruel. Now, this is, um, this beer here in the United States was $1.75. Now, I don't know how much bot that equates to. I guess I could do that later. But um, these beers were really cheap in Thailand. I believe I used to buy them at 7-Eleven for under 200 bot. I'm not sure how much dollars that were. But at $1.75, you can't beat this price. It's an excellent price for what you get. You get a couple, you get a case of them. You're probably buying a case at 24, well, let's say a 12 pack, because that's, I think, how they're usually sold, if not by a six. You're buying a six pack for about eight bucks, so the price is definitely gonna decrease. Hey, hey, Frank, welcome. You finished an exam. What exam did you have? Welcome to the show, and uh, congratulations on your finishing the exam. I hope you did well. We're drinking the Chang Lager. I'm gonna go ahead and give the price. I think it's a solid, stable price, okay? Of also a 3.5. A 3.5. Ah, oh, that's awesome. When Drunatic tells Frank, I missed you, I, I feel the love with this group, man. You know, we may only have 10 to 20 people, but they're good people. They're solid people. They're, they're just people that are, you know, I started this thing. I started doing uh, Travel Man Dan, and I wanted to do the live show, and people started showing up, and each and every week, the solid, good people show up, and I miss you guys when you're not here, but thank you so much. Frank, welcome to the show. We're working on the design now. The design of Chang, not, nothing too great, right? I mean, the green bottle's cool. I like that they keep the gold and the green. I like this little notch right here, okay? If you guys don't remember, Remember we did uh, the, the Angkor, the Cambodian beer. It's almost like the same label, right? Even down to this weird little notch. Because I was looking at this, I was like, why do they have this little thing? Might be where the sticker label or kind of roll, rolls and, and puts it on here. But nothing great. But one thing I do like about it is I'm going to give Chang a lot of props. Because 
they go ahead and they go ahead and they they put down the symbolic thing of Thailand, which is the elephant, right? And they throw that into the label. I think that's really cool. I think that it's uh really noticeable. The offer label are cooler, not just not. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. There's nothing that really pops out to me. Maybe this Thai flower. Nothing too grand. Nothing too over the top. It's not like they have a duck that's you know crushing down cities with its duckzilla. So I'm gonna go ahead and give the standard 3.5. 3.5 is also a good score. Now, one thing that I will say is the accessibility. Let me know in your country if you can get chunk. You might be able to get it at the Asian market. You might be able to find it in some obscure other market. But this one is actually pretty accessible, especially here in California. You can find it in any Asian market. You can find it in a lot of like total wine and beer. You can find it in a lot of uh, places like, um, like Bevmo. Unfortunately, I don't know about South America. I don't know about Africa. I think I know about Asia. This beer is pretty prevalent. So therefore, I'm going to give it a little bit of a higher score. I think it's a good accessible beer. I think it represents a fun culture in Thailand. And if anybody has ever been to Thailand, they understand how fun it is. And so Chang tries to promote itself throughout the world as being a good beer and bringing back those fun memories of Thailand and accessibility, I think you can find it a lot of places. I feel like you can find it anywhere from New York to Florida and California. And I feel like, you know what? It's pretty accessible all over Asia. So that's why I'm gonna give it a good score of also a 3.5. A 3.5 is pretty respectable. I feel like you can buy Chang online anywhere in the world. I feel like no matter what major city you're in, you can at least find Chang. I don't think that with every major city in the world, you can find this Duckzilla. But I believe you could probably find Chang somewhere. Chang logo is still prevalent as tank top fat. <clears throat> yeah, I could see that. Yeah. One thing I do like about the design on Chang that I forgot to bring up, which I gave it a better score is, not only is it a green bottle, but they imprint this, you know, bubbled up glass, okay? Right here, and it says the word Chang. So that's kind of cool. And um, that's just the, the, the little thing. Oops, bar, okay? Now, the TMD factory. Going back to what Nate was just talking about, oops. Now, I drank a ton of beers in Thailand. I had a great time each and every time I was there. Chang brings back those memories for me. Me and my friends hanging out in some hostels and, and you know just going out on the beach and drinking it up all afternoon, going back, maybe sleeping and passing out for a few hours, waking up and going to the bars all night, drinking more chang. It was just a really fun time. Each and every time I went to Thailand, I went home, I felt great. I felt amazing. I, I just had like, you know, you know when you find a place that you like to go to vacation at and then you try to go back there, it's never the same. Because the first time was the best. I didn't get that ever with Thailand. Each and every time I went there, I had an amazing time. And I will credit that to the Thai people and the Thai culture and the Thai food. But also with the Thai fun. The Thai beer is a huge part of going and vacationing. Like, yeah, you can vacation to Thailand. You can go see temples. You can do the floating markets. You can do all that fun stuff. But... Getting slobber knockered on Chang beer is one of the funnest things to do over there. People are really nice there. They're full of smiles. Anywhere you want, you can drink a beer on a tuk-tuk. You can drink a beer on a beach. It's just fun stuff. And for me, Chang represents that. It represents the good heart, fun, cultural people of Thailand. I'm going to give it a great score of a 4.0. I look forward to going back to Thailand. I heard they're opening up. I'm really excited about it. And that's why we're going to go ahead and give it a 4.0. So let me tally up the score, and then I'm out with the quote of the week. All right, so let's see. All right, so respectable score. Chan Beer had a great day. It rang in there at a score of an 18. An 18 was a wonderful score. It continues on that great standard. I think that's the threshold. I think the standard of good being 18, the cusp 
of being a 16 and below is definitely not a good beer. But I think if you hit the 18 and up, I think it's definitely worth investigating. I think it's definitely worth trying off of my recommendation about circling around, trying to find these beers, suck them down, and listen. If you ever try any beer that you watch on this video, go back and let me know down in the comments below what you give it. Here is the score sheet. Use my score sheet and give it your own score because this is just my recommendation. You might be way off. You might have gave Chong a 16. You might have gave Chong a 22. You might have had some other weird experience where you had your own X factor. You might have thought the design was a lot better than what I thought. I'd love to hear your interpretation of the beers. So if you ever want to circle back and find some of the beers, just drop it down in the comments. Duckzilla, 23. Right, let me know with that score. Love to hear from you. Guys, thank you so much for hanging with me. I love it. I look forward to it each and every week. Absolutely blessed to have the opportunity to entertain you guys. Thank you so much for hanging with me. I was roughed up this morning, but I continued on with the show. And thank you so much for showing. I'm going to leave you guys with this. This is the quote that I want to leave you with. And this is from the Dalai Lama, okay? The Tibetan priest and monk. It's kind of like the Tibetan uh, pro prophet, or uh, I guess you would call him like the Pope. But um, he said this. And, and this is a guy that studies life. He studies life behavior. He studies uh, people and um, theologies and ways of living and through not just like a religious way, but also just a way of living as a Buddhist. And he said this, and it's very important that you guys understand this, and it's all relative to each and every one of us. He said, the purpose of our lives is to be happy. That's the purpose. That's it. And when you think about that in the simplicity of this guy, it's to be happy, right? So wherever you are, whatever you're doing, just be happy. It doesn't, doesn't matter how much fucking bling bling, excuse my language, how much shit you own, how much stuff you own. It's not about that. It's about being happy. And I think, you know, being around people that make you happy, people, people that inspire your spirit. That's the Pope. <laughs> yeah. I think that it's, a, it's an important thing to understand and so many people miss on it. And I'm not one to judge anybody's lives. <clears throat> I'm not sitting up here and say that. But maybe that I can go ahead and repeat this from the Dalai Lama. That the purpose of our lives is to be happy. That somehow, some way, throughout the week, you can take this in. Maybe you're driving down the road. Maybe you're just sitting. Maybe you're just waking up or you're falling asleep. And reflect back on this. Just be happy. Understand, look, you're alive. You have good food going into your body, okay? You have an opportunity each and every day to wake up and to better that situation. Now, things definitely, sometimes, no matter where you are, they feel grim, they feel low, but you're able to wake up and better that. Things will get better if you continue to work at it. But the overall purpose of our life is to be happy, and the Dalai Lama is somebody that understands this, who thinks in meditation and is way beyond the... the with the regular point of view, right? This guy is, he spends his entire life sitting and thinking. And maybe you, you don't, you look at this and you say, well, I need this to be happy. I mean, this, that's not what he's saying. He's saying the purpose of life is that you should be happy. So please find something in your life that makes you happy and build off of that purpose. Okay, build off of those. And I think that's an important lesson to learn. Whether it's the Dalai Lama or whether it's a guy smoking a cigarette at a coffee shop that tells you the purpose of life is to be happy. They're right. Have a great week, Danny. And everyone tells you, I'll try to make it on a beer review. No one else. Thank you. Guys, I'm going to leave you with that. Like I said, next week, Friday, I'll be hopping on at 10 p.m. Thank you for another great show. I'm in love. <laughs> that's, that's, that's it. Do you want to think? I'm in love with life. There's nothing wrong with that. That's our purpose. Be in love with it. You know, be happy, guys, okay? That is the purpose of life. Dalai Lama has said it, but so many of us already know that. Let's just do it. Martin, no problem. Sorry, we're going to tune you out. Thank you so much for hanging with me, not only this week, but each and every week. Notch, it was awesome to see you. Thanks for hanging. Pops, I hope you're there. Uncle John, love you guys. Hope you're doing well. Thanks for watching. Check out these beers. The Chung got an 18 
the duck zilla got a 20 really great show nate if you're out there and third thing don't forget thank you thank you for the lovely show thank you wonder strudel so always fun to have you here guys great show thank you so much i couldn't have done it without you i'll see you hopefully next week i wish you a great week remember the purpose of life is to be happy take what you can and be excited about it i'm travel man dan and remember it's a big world out there make sure you see every bit of it bye frank